I'm Leo Walder for Kit Guru, and I'm squished between this Dino PC Raptor 2 and this 4K display to show you something that is crashingly obvious, which is that Gears of War 4 at 4K set at Ultra plays very nicely indeed on a new KB Lake overclocked 7700K processor and a pair of GTX 1080 graphics cards. Here we go. And the fans kick up slightly and uh, it roars into action and this chugs along at a very nice steady 50 frames per second. Uh, now if you haven't played games at 4K you may not appreciate just what an absolute killer 4K is compared to lesser settings. It is a monster and the Dino PC Raptor 2 it chugs through this absolutely gloriously whilst looking marvellous. Uh, clearly the worst part of the equation is my uh, Acer 28 inch uh, TN panel. Uh, it is uh, a gaming experience to behold and the the KB Lake 7700K processor overclocked to 5 GHz is a significant part of that particular deal. So here's the list of hardware Dyno PCs used in Raptor 2. Case, as you can probably see, is Fantex N3 Evolve ATX uh, with tempered glass on both sides. Uh, I adore this case, it is one of my personal favourites, certainly of 2016. So it's glass both sides, cabling very tidy on the back as you'll see in photos on KitGuru as per usual. Uh, the processor, so that's Intel Core i7 7700 case, uh, 7th gen. Now obviously this is a brand new processor, we're still getting to grips with the thing. Uh, as far as we can see, KB Lake is much like Skylake but it's a bit faster, it's somewhat hotter. Uh, and it does very nicely, thank you. If you already have Skylake, would you go for KB Lake? No, almost certainly not. Allied with uh, uh, KB Lake 7th Gen, we also have the 270 series of chipsets rather than the 170, and therefore we have new motherboard. Uh, the interesting thing here being is the branding for Aorus is much, much larger than the branding for Gigabyte. Uh, but apart from that, it's a Gigabyte motherboard Z270 chipset. Uh, in terms of features, it doesn't seem to offer anything over 170. And the performance is storming. Again, figures, uh, graphs and such like on Kit Guru in the usual styly. Uh, the overclock on the 7700K appears to be the world's simplest. Dyna PC has either got a very good processor or they got lucky or they, I don't know, or they have some secret source. Basically, the uh, CPU voltage is 1.32 volts and the multiplier is 50 times and that's it. Uh, and there you get a straight 5 gigahertz on all the cores. Uh, the power limit remains, I checked in the BIOS, at 91 watts and XMP running at 1.35 volts and it's DDR4 3200 megahertz. Uh, 16 gig of Corsair Vengeance RAM. Uh, you've got a pair of Palette GTX 1080 graphics cards and there's a Samsung 256 gig SM961 SSD along with a 2 terabyte WD bulk storage drive. Uh, it is, and I mean this in the nicest possible sense, very straightforward. They pick decent quality components, they put them together and the result is storming. The power supply is a Corsair 750 watt RMX onboard audio, Windows 10 home, five year warranty. Uh, liquid cooling is obviously a massive part, uh, not only of the look of the thing, but also of the performance. So it's EK through and through. At the front, you've got a 240 EK res uh, radiator. At the top, you've got a 360. There's a D5 pump with an EK reservoir with that funky uh, logo on it from a uh, Dyno PC. The coolant is white. I'm guessing it's Mayhem's. If it's EK coolant, then that's made by Mayhem's anyway. Could be wrong, but that's my guess. Uh, the blocks and back plates on the palette graphics cards all EK, you've got an EK Supremacy Evo nickel CPU block, and you've got a whole bunch of half inch uh, Primo Chill, that's by EK, Onyx tubing, which is black in color. I like the look of the thing. I would kind of prefer to see clear tubing showing uh, the coolant inside, but this is a PC that's been built that's going to be in action for years and realistically tubing discolors over time. The black tubing is going to look as good in three years time I would say as it looks at this very moment. So it's probably a very wise choice. It wouldn't be my choice for a home build. I understand what they've done. Uh, we've got EK uh, connectors throughout and we've got a Dyno PC lighting kit which uh, gives you all the things, all the different modes you'd expect, flashing, strobing, breathing, you've got a whole range of colors and you've got two strips, different colors and you can cycle them in different colors through or you can match them and have them run in the same color across the entire case. There's also lighting on the uh, Aorus motherboard. I'm gonna say gigabyte motherboard. I prefer gigabyte to Aorus. Anyway, on the motherboard, there is lighting which you can control on the bias. It's a color wheel, you can pick the mode. I've 
set it to static to avoid annoyance. Uh, so that can obviously work in harmony with the uh, lighting in the case. It's not, however, um, they, they are not linked together. You have to set the two independently. And then we've got, and I've got a question mark here, six Corsair ML120 fans. Uh, my guess is that the reason that, e uh, that Dynapieces pick these fans is because they are um, uh, LED illuminated and they work perfectly well either in uh, airflow mode or in liquid cooling mode. They do a perfectly good job, but they do get a bit rorty. When I'm booting the system up, uh, one time in two, the fans are roaring away initially, reboot the thing, and then they, they sort themselves out. Uh, I'm guessing it's an early bias from the new motherboard, new chipset. I, I, I think that'll be fixed. But uh, the bias control of the fans uh, doesn't appear to be 100% at this second. Uh, I'm quite confident that will be sorted. All the fans are hooked up to the PWM hub on the back of the motherboard tray, which comes with the Fantex case, and when it's working correctly, it works absolutely immaculately. Uh, overall, it's a very good PC. My view of this KB Lake processor, and this is the only one I've seen so far, the 7700K, is it's toasty. CPU idles at 30, loaded 71. Now with this liquid cooling setup, that is hot. Uh, GPUs idle 28, 29, rise to 47 and 45 under load, which is the sort of thing you expect to see with uh, properly cooled 1080s. Uh, if anything, again, the CPU is pumping some heat into the system and that's adding to the problem. Uh, the cooling system is more than up to the task. That is uh, almost entirely, I would say, a function of an overclocked uh, KB Lake processor. It is as toasty as heck. This cooling system keeps it under control. Uh, I am not generally a massive fan of spending a fortune on what I regard as the lesser socket, uh, LG 11.5X rather than uh, 2011.3. Um, but as things stand at the start of 2017, this is the latest and greatest hardware. The performance is epic. The build is immaculate, absolutely immaculate. Um, my only question mark over the thing would be the ML fans, because I consider there to be better fans on the market, but they don't look as good. The cosmetically, this system is just brilliant. And the uh, vinyl wrap that Dino PC has used is just the icing on the cake, absolutely glorious. Uh, performance gaming at 4K, moi. But then you'd expect nothing less from a proper processor driving a pair of GTX 1080s. And that's just common sense. Uh, as things stand, I think if you were to invest your three and a half thousand pounds or so in this PC, you'd be very happy indeed, provided you game at 4K. I am not completely clear what happens when Ryzen comes along, if it turns out to be the killer that we all hope. Do you then change to an AMD system? Later in the year, at some point, we're expecting to see the new uh, LGA. Well, it's not 2011, they're going to use some different socket, but a uh, version of Skylake. You might then have to consider switching to that. So it could be you buy this stonking PC, and then some months time you go, oh, all right, it was great, now it's not quite so great. But if you're spending top money for the high-end PCs, you know it's only going to last a certain period of time before something better comes along. That's just a fact of life. So Dino PC Raptor 2, it's a stellar PC. KB Lake is uh, in a way the least interesting part of it. Everything else is just glorious. Absolutely love it to bits. Fabulous PC. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe. Do please go to the Kit Guru website to see the graphs and the photos because there's a lot more info there. We're not just a YouTube channel. I'm Leo Wood for Kit Guru. This is Dino PC Raptor 2.